In the next five minutes, you're going to learn a disgustingly easy technique to design stunning backgrounds like this, all in Photoshop. And there is a trick to making these actually look good. And as you'll see in a moment, it's very easy to screw up. And these can be used for posters, websites, apps, just pretty much anything, to be honest. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so we're in Photoshop and I have a canvas size of 3840 by 2160, which is basically 4K. Now let's select the paint bucket tool and then go and pick our first colour. And if you're following along, this can be any colour you like. I think I'm going to go with a nice dark purple. And then once you've got your colour, click anywhere on the background layer to fill this with that colour. Ooh, that sound. Next, we're going to select the brush tool. And then from the drop down at the top, let's open this up. And I'm going to select one of Photoshop's default brushes, one that has a nice feathered edge. Let's bring the size up, make sure the hardness is set to zero, and you can squish this down if you'd like to change the brush shape. Now from the color picker, it's time to select our second color. And I think I'm gonna go with a pinky, reddish kind of mauve, dark, reddy, purple, pink. And you can do this with two colors, three colors. Nope, that's four. You can basically do this with as many colors as you like. Now position the cursor in the center of the canvas and use the left and right square brackets to adjust the brush size. You can also rotate the brush by using the left and right arrows on the keyboard. And you can hold shift to rotate in larger increments. So I think I'm going to settle for something like a, maybe a 45 degree angle. And there we go, a splash of color. And if you don't get it right first time, you can always undo and try again. Now let's reduce the brush size and add a few more of these dotted around the canvas. And if you'd like your splashes of color to be a bit more subtle, you can also bring down the flow. And there we go, much more subtle. And we can click a few times to then gradually build this up. And this is a great technique if you want the center of your brush to be a bit more vibrant. Okay, let's add a few more teeny weeny ones in those gaps. And now I'm gonna do the same thing again, but I'm going to pick a third color. Let's go for a yellow and really light up the center of those glows. Ooh, yeah, this is looking good. Kind of reminds me of aliens or like meteors or something. Yeah, just like that. Next, let's duplicate the background layer. Oh, that was nice. And then right click this layer and convert this to a smart object. And now we've done that, we can apply these filters as smart filters. So let's start with liquify and the liquify window pops up. Let's zoom out a bit for this next step. And now we need to select the forward warp tool. And on the right hand side, increase that brush size and make sure the pressure is at 100. And this is it, the moment of truth. Move your cursor to the center, click and drag down. Oh. That was disappointing. So uh, yeah, that didn't quite work. However, we can try and fix that by unchecking the box, show backdrop. Now let's try that again. Click and drag and uh, oh. So if you do get this happen, you need to check pin edges. And now with this fixed, if we try that again, you'll see it beautifully warps the design. You can see we're coming down from the top. If we go to the right, click and drag to the left. We can also go all the way to the bottom left corner with our massive brush. And if we click and drag towards the center, you'll see it pushes these bands of color closer together. However, if we undo this, we can also click directly on those bands of color and then stretch them out across the canvas. One stretch to the right, and let's do it again and stretch it to the left. Lovely. And if we go to the bottom right corner, click and drag, remember we can push these bands of color back together. And using these techniques together with different brush sizes, you can now sculpt your own beautiful design. All right, geez, calm down. It's just a tutorial. Anyway, once you're happy, click OK, and you'll see the smart filter is now applied. And the benefit of using smart filters is that you can edit them or delete them. Now let's try that again from scratch and see what we get this time. Hmm. Yeah. Well, this turned out a bit shit, didn't it? But we might be able to still use this if we play around with the blending modes. And this will blend our two layers together. So we could try screen, for example. So the design is now a mix of both layers. And you can even bring down the opacity just to make that second layer a bit more subtle. But in this example, it looks a bit rubbish. So let's hide that layer. Now I'm going to select layer one again and add a new adjustment layer. This is going to be a brightness and contrast layer, a very quick and easy way to brighten up your design if it's looking a little bit too dark. Something else we can also do is go to filter, down to blur gallery, and select field blur. And we can use this to blur certain parts of the design. So for the default pin that's been dropped here, let's set the blur to zero. 
And then I can go over here and add a new pin and I'm going to crank up the blur. And as you can see, it blurs just this area on the right. So you can add a few different pins with a value of zero to keep them in focus and then blur out certain parts if you like. And if you're a cheeky sausage, you can turn on high quality and then click OK. And because this effect is also a smart filter, I can hide or show this effect anytime I like. Right, now let's double click liquify, close down annoying pop-up and work on this a bit more. Here we go. Oh, come on, look at that. For five minutes, that is not bad at all. I'd even go so far as to say good. And if you'd like another good tutorial, well, I've got one for you right here that I think you'll love. But as always, take care and I'll see you next time.